Unit 7, Lesson 16, Common Factors. Number one, a teacher is making gift bags. Each bag is to be filled with pencils and stickers. The teacher has 24 pencils and 36 stickers to use. Each bag will have the same number of each item with no items left over. For example, she could make two bags with 12 pencils and 18 stickers each. What are the other possibilities? Explain or show your reasoning. 24 and 36 are both divisible by 2, 3, 4, and 6. I've made a chart or a table to help me through this. One bag has 24 pencils and 36 stickers. Two bags has 12 pencils and 18 stickers. Three bags has 8 pencils and 12 stickers. Four bags has six pencils and nine stickers. And six bags has four pencils and six stickers. Number two, A. List all the factors of 42. One and 42, two and 21, three and 14, and six and seven. All the factors of 42 are one, two, three, six, seven, 14, 21 and 42. In blue you see the 1 and 42 because 1 times 42 equals 42. In green I have 2 times 21 equals 42. In red I have 3 times 14 equals 42. And finally in purple I have 6 times 7 that equals 42. Those are all the factors of 42. What is the greatest common factor of 42 and 15? Again, here I've listed the factors of 42, and below I've listed the factors of 15. The factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. 1 times 15 equals 15, and 3 times 5 equals 15. These are the factors of 15. The greatest common factor of 42 and 15 is 3. C. What is the greatest common factor of 42 and 50? Again, here we see the factors of 42, and beneath it I have the factors of 50. 1, 2, 5, 10, 25, and 50. So we need to look for the greatest common factor. Which numbers do they have in common, and which is the largest one that they have in common? Well, it's not very large, but it's the largest one that they have in common. The greatest common factor of 42 and 50 is 2. Number 3. A school chorus has 90 6th grade students and 75 7th grade students. The music director wants to make groups of performers with the same combination of 6th and 7th grade students in each group. She wants to form as many groups as possible. A. What is the largest number of groups that could be formed? Explain or show your reasoning. The first thing I did was write down the factors of 90 and write down the factors of 75. Next, I looked for the greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor of 90 and 75 is 15. 15 is the largest number of groups that could be formed. B. If that many groups are formed, how many students of each grade level would be in each group? 96th grade students divided by 15 and 75 7th grade students divided by 15. Look to the top of the screen where I have the factors of 90 and you'll see that 90 divided by 15 equals 6 because 6 times 15 equals 90. Look underneath it where you see the factors of 75 and you'll discover that 5 times 15 equals 75 or 75 divided by 15 equals 5. If 15 groups were formed, there would be 6 6th graders in each group and 5 7th graders in each group. Number 4. Here are some bank transactions from a bank account last week. Which transactions represent negative values? Monday. $650 paycheck deposited. That's not a negative, that's a positive because it was deposited. Tuesday, $40 withdrawal from the ATM at the gas pump. That's a negative because money was withdrawn. Wednesday, $20 credit for returned merchandise. 
That's a positive because merchandise was returned and $20 was credited back to their account. Thursday, $125 deducted for cell phone charges. That's a negative because $125 was deducted from the account. Friday, $45 check written to pay for book order. That would be a negative because a check was written to pay for a book order and the money would be taken out of the account. Saturday, $80 withdrawal for weekend spending money. That's also a negative because $80 was withdrawn, which means money is taken out of the account. Sunday, $10 cash back reward deposited from a credit card company. That's a positive because $10 cash was deposited into the account. The transactions that were negative were Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Number five, find the quotients. A, one seventh divided by one eighth equals one seventh times the reciprocal of one eighth, and one seventh times eight over one equals eight sevenths, or one and one seventh. B, 12 fifths divided by 6 fifths. That's equal to 12 fifths times the reciprocal of 6 fifths, which is 5 sixths. 12 fifths times 5 sixths equals 60 thirtieths, or 60 divided by 30, which is equal to 2. C. 1 tenth divided by 10. That equals 1 tenth divided by 10 over 1. And 1 tenth divided by 10 over 1 equals 1 tenth times the reciprocal of 10 over 1, which is 1 over 10. So 1 tenth times 1 tenth equals 1 hundredth, or 1 over 100. D. 9 tenths divided by 10 ninths. That equals 9 tenths times the reciprocal of 10 ninths, which is 9 tenths. 9 tenths times 9 tenths equals 81 hundredths or 81 over 100. Number six, an elephant can travel at a constant speed of 25 miles per hour, while a giraffe can travel at a constant speed of 16 miles in one half hour. A, which animal runs faster? Explain your reasoning. First, take a look at the constant speed of the giraffe. It travels at 16 miles in a half hour. So 16 miles in a half hour is the same as 32 miles in one hour. And 25 miles is less than 32 miles. So the giraffe travels faster than the elephant. B. How far can each animal run in three hours? The rate that the elephant runs is 25 miles in one hour, and the rate that the giraffe runs is 32 miles in one hour. For the elephant, I'll make a chart with miles on the left side and hours on the right side. The information says that the elephant travels 25 miles in one hour. To find out how far the elephant travels in three hours, I'll have to multiply 1 times 3 to make 3 hours, and I also need to multiply the number of miles by 3. 25 miles times 3 equals 75. So in 3 hours, the elephant can travel 75 miles. Next, I'll make the same type of chart for the giraffe. The information tells me that the giraffe travels 16 miles in a half hour, which is the same as 32 miles in one hour. In order to figure out how far the giraffe can travel in three hours, I need to multiply one hour times three. Since I multiplied the hours by three, I also need to multiply the miles times three. 32 times three equals 96. In three hours, the giraffe could travel 96 miles. Congratulations, you have completed Unit 7, Lesson 16, Common Factors.